So I've spent the last few weeks on an epic quest, one that will determine my comfort level and general happiness for years to come. It's the all-important quest for a new couch. So I've been shopping for a new couch after six years with my current one. And that couch, it's the Urban Sofa from West Elm, has served me well over the years. Despite its scratchiness on my perpetually pantsless legs, it's a good couch and we've had some beautiful times together. And I would recommend it if you're someone who wears pants in your apartment. <laughs> But now it's time to move on to greener, softer fabric pastures. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my whole sofa shopping experience and share my tips and what I learned along the way so that you can use my experience to help you find your dream couch the next time you're shopping for one. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to reveal which sofa I chose. And if you're new here, my name is Steffi, and on this channel, I give small apartment styling tips and cozy living inspiration. So this video is gonna be divided into three parts, online shopping, in-person shopping, and how I made the decision to buy the couch that I bought. So let's dive into the first part, online shopping. So the very first thing I did in my online shopping for a couch, and what I recommend to you as well, is to just start with a simple Google search. Like I literally just typed in sectional sofa, and then I went over to the shopping tab in the Google results, and then I just did like a preliminary search for what's out there. And my ultimate goal while searching for couches online was to find something that I liked online and then hopefully be able to see it in person at whatever store it's from. Because shopping for a couch is, it's no joke. It's an important piece of furniture and it's super important for it to be very comfy. I personally spend an insane amount of time on my couch, watching TV, playing video games. A comfy couch is pretty much number one on the priority list for my lifestyle. So ideally, I wanted to find one at a store like West Elm or Crate and Barrel or Pottery Barn where I could see it online and then hopefully find it in a store so that I could take it for a little test drive. But I was finding that a lot of the cutest couches out there were from online stores like Joybird, Article, All Modern, you know, these online retailers that don't have stores. So I started warming up to the idea that maybe I would order a couch online without seeing it in person or feeling it in person first even though that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so after I spent a, a good amount of time searching through the Google shopping results, one couch really, really stuck in my mind. And that was the Sven Yarrow Gold sectional <laughs> from Article. This couch has been on my radar for a few years now. I've even featured it in a couple videos, I think. Like I've used it as an example when making like mood boards and such. So I decided to dive deeper into researching what the Sven Yarrow Gold sectional was all about. So these are the things I recommend you do when you start considering a couch is to really like do a deep dive on the page. What are the dimensions? What do the photos look like? What do the customer photos look like? So this is when the Sven sectional became a real contender for me. But like every couch, it has its pros and its cons. So the pros were that it looks super comfy. It's very cute and stylish. I love velvet. 
obviously. And it's also my favorite color. I love gold, mustard, yellow colors, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> The potential cons for this fen were that I was worried that maybe cat hair would show really badly on a velvet couch and that it would become a really high maintenance cleaning experience. Same thing with spills. I, I eat on my couch while watching TV and so I need a couch that isn't going to be like a disaster if I spill something on it and velvet I'm not sure. I wasn't really sure if that was going to be a problem for my goblin lifestyle. <laughs> and another potential con was that going with that sort of mustard gold yellow would mean that I would no longer have a couch with a neutral base color. I was just talking about this in last week's video. Um, I am a big proponent of choosing a couch that has a neutral base color, like dark gray in my, in my case, so that when you're styling around it, you have total freedom to use whatever colors you want. It's like having a clean canvas. So by going with this gold color, I would be giving up that neutral base and the freedom that comes with having a neutral base color. So once I felt like I was done going through the Google shopping results, it was time to hit up West Elm because like I said, my couch that I've had for the last six years is from West Elm and it's just a great store for furniture that is high quality, but generally not like insane in price. I mean, West Elm can get up there, but it's possible to find some reasonably priced, high quality furniture at West Elm. And if I found a couch on West Elm's site, that meant I could go into one of their stores and hopefully they would have it in stock. So next step was to search West Elm's site. So once I had perused pages and pages of West Elm's sofa selection, the couch that really stood out to me was the Axel leather couch. I mean, this couch to me is so beautiful. I am a lover of leather. I mean, in the fall and winter, I pretty much live in my leather jacket. So I loved the idea of having a classic brown leather couch. So once I realized that I was very interested in the Axel leather sofa, that's when I went through the same process that I did with the Sven. I deep dived into photos, studied the dimensions and tried to picture would it work size wise. And of course went through the customer photos so that I could see what the couch looks like in a real person's space. So here were the pros of the Axel leather sofa. It's stunning. It has beautiful sort of worn-ish looking leather. It's a very classic look that will go with anything. I love mixing masculine energy with feminine energy in a space. And so the Axel leather sofa sort of fulfills that masculine gentlemanly vibe. <laughs> I also really loved that it has this ottoman that makes it look like a sectional and you can move it from one side of the couch to the other so you're not just married to one side. And another pro is the fact that it would have that neutral base color that the Sven gold sofa wouldn't. Having a neutral brown couch would mean that I could mix whatever styles and colors I want and it'll go with pretty much everything. Now here are the potential cons for the Axel leather sofa. Number one, and it's a biggie, is the idea of leather on bare legs. I mean, I really, I don't know about sitting bare-legged on leather and then having the skin stick, you know? <laughs> like, would that drive me crazy? Also, the Axel leather sofa is quite shallow in depth. I mean, I know that having the ottoman act as sort of a sectional would sort of mitigate that problem, but still, I, I like a little bit of a deeper experience <laughs> with my couch. Like, I like to get cozy, I like to sit cross-legged, I like to, you know, have lots of surface area for me to flop around. And an obvious con is the price. The Axel leather sofa is a pricey boy. 
like almost double in price compared to the Sven. So that was the online shopping portion of my sofa searching experience. Next up was shopping in person. Now this started with me going to West Elm and wanting to find the Axle leather sofa in person and hoping that I could sit upon it and see if it was worthy of my, my butt. Unfortunately, they didn't have it in person at West Elm. No Axle to be found. But the good thing about West Elm is it's a gorgeous store and I just like being inside it. <laughs> and I was also curious to see the couches that, that I could find in person. Like maybe I would see something that I didn't see online. So I walked through, sat in a bunch of the different sofas. They have some really great options. One that stood out to me was the Andes sofa. That was really comfy. It just, it didn't make my heart flutter, you know? <laughs> but definitely worth looking into the Andes sofa um, if you're on a, a couch shopping excursion like I was. But other than that, I wasn't really finding any couches that I really clicked with, but it wasn't all for naught because I actually got to sit on the axle leather chair. Seeing and feeling this chair made me even more interested in its couch counterpart because it was so comfy and the, the leather, it's butter, okay? It's buttery leather. <laughs> you guys, the axle leather is, it's exquisite. So even though I wasn't able to sit on the axle leather sofa, the axle leather armchair gave me some really good insight into what the couch might be like. Next up in my in-person shopping experience was actually a local store in Issaquah, Washington called Lucky Home. If you're in the Seattle area, if you haven't already, go to Lucky Home. It is stunning. It looks like Joanna Gaines walked into the store and just barfed up her aesthetic everywhere. <laughs> it is a very, very pretty store. Now, aside from just loving walking through this store and just seeing what little decor pieces I could potentially buy, I also knew that they had a couch that I really liked when I saw it a few months ago. And luckily, they still had it. It was the Riverside leather sofa, and this was another really beautiful leather couch option. The pros for this couch were that it was obviously very beautiful. I like the idea of buying from a local store and it felt like a high quality, just lovely couch. And it's nice because I got to sit in it. I wouldn't have to just order it online and cross my fingers that I would like it. <laughs> the cons were that it's not a sectional. I really want a sectional where I can just like kick my feet up and get really cozy. And the leather, while it's very nice leather, extremely nice leather, it just didn't compare to the leather of the axle sofa or armchair, but same thing, same leather. And of course, it shares the same con of the whole bare-legged conundrum. You know, do I want my bare legs on leather? So same problem as the axle in that sense. So the Riverside sofa became a contender as well. So we had the Sven, we had the, the, the axle, and we had the Riverside. So after the online shopping combined with the in-person shopping, it was time to start making a decision. And sadly, the Riverside got the cut. I just really wanted a sectional. So then it was between Sven and Axel, which sounds like an epic battle between Norse gods, which felt really appropriate because this was a very epic decision for me. <laughs> So before I tell you which one I actually chose, here are the things that I considered that helped me make this decision. And these are the things I would recommend you consider as well when you are purchasing a couch for yourself. 
Number one is comfort. Sadly, I wasn't gonna be able to sit in either the Sven or the Axel, but based on the research I did between YouTube videos and reading reviews and so on, I could count on the fact that they would be comfortable. Obviously, it's it was a risk, but I couldn't help it that none of the couches that I saw in person met my needs and desires. So first priority, comfort, or at least the reasonable expectation for comfort. Second is style, aesthetic. Will it look good? <laughs> Does it fit your personal style? Will it go well with the rest of your furniture and decor? This is important. Not as important as comfort, but still very important. And the third consideration is, of course, price. I personally think that couches are worth investing in. Like I'd rather get a high quality investment couch that'll last me for years versus like settling for a cheap, low quality, not very comfortable couch. But all things being equal, if you can find a less expensive couch that is quality and has great reviews, then that factors in. Now here was a fun little surprising thing that helped me make my decision. I asked you guys on Instagram which couch you preferred, and I also asked you guys to tell me if you have any experience with velvet sofas. You know, do you have issues with cat hair or spills and so on with your velvet couches. And what I found that a lot of you were saying is that having a velvet couch is not a big deal in terms of cleanup and spills and cat hair. There were some negative views on velvet couches, totally reasonable, but for the most part, the, the resounding feedback was that not a big deal at all. Also, my, my fears about pantsless legs on leather were affirmed by you guys too. <laughs> so all in all, thank you to everyone who responded to my Instagram stories. You actually were a pivotal part in me making the decision. And let's just reveal what that decision was. The couch that I chose was the Sven Yarrow Gold Sofa. It was a really close, close race for me and also for you guys. Like the Yarrow Gold couch only won by like a couple percentages. Not that I was basing my entire decision on, on how you guys voted, but it's worth noting just how close it was. And it really reflected my own state of mind. It was a really close decision for me. But ultimately, you know, between the price and the, the velvet on bare legs versus leather on bare legs. And the overall sort of comfort level, like I just feel like this Fen just looks so comfy and that's what the reviews were saying. That's what one person DM'd me who has the exact sofa in gray and she said it's extremely comfy. So I felt like I could just go with the Sven and count on the fact that it was gonna be comfy. So I ordered the Sven, it will be coming between like August 3rd and August 15th, I think. So I can't tell you yet if this was a successful purchase. I can't tell you if this was the right choice yet. I, I think it is, but stay tuned. I will definitely let you guys know what I think of the Sven and how it goes. But for this video, I just wanted to take you through my whole shopping process. And again, I hope that it helps you when you're shopping for a couch and just gives you some insight on how you can approach this whole adventure of shopping for couches. Let me know in the comments below, would you have chosen the Sven or would you have chosen the Axel? Let me know. And remember, your apartment is destined to be pretty and you are pretty powerful. <laughs>